Such a very handsome man, Ben Radford. Shiny head and glasses can remind you he's a handsome man, Ben Radford. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Radford. Remarkably self-serving song. It was it was wonderful. <laughs> Those are my favorite kind. Thank you, George. And wow, more people than I expected. Awesome. Appreciate the everyone showing up who did. Uh, again, the the appearance of uh, not not uh, being hungover. That's uh, that, that's appreciated. I'm going to be talking. Let's see. Am I up yet? Wait. All right. Hugo. Oh, so yeah, okay, fine. You guys are all over. Perfect. So the title is, Oh Man, Armageddon Again. <laughs> yes. That was clear. I thought that up after a beer or two. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know, I'm, uh, I'm Benjamin Radford, uh, Deputy Editor of Skeptical Inquirer Science Magazine, author of six books with, seven, uh, with the seventh one coming out later this year, including Scientific Paranormal Investigation, uh, a couple copies of which are available out there. And uh, my most recent one is co-authored with a sociologist, Bob Bartholomew, uh, and it's titled, The Martians Have Landed, A History of Colorful Media Panics and Hoaxes. At least that was the t title at one point. They kept changing the title on it, so. And speaking of Martians landing and hysteria and doomsday, um, that's what we're talking about today. So uh, I've only got uh, half an hour, and uh, one, one could talk for hours and hours about doomsdays and prophecies and things like that. So I'm just going to sort of give a little short, o short overview of, of, um, of some of the more popular doomsdays, as opposed to the unpopular ones. Um, and, uh, and of course, a bit of the Mayan prophecy, because as we know, all know the Mayans were way ahead of their time in some ways, and in other ways, not so much. So let's begin with uh, the doomsday of April 23rd, 1843. Uh, this was a, a doomsday that was, uh, was prophesied by uh, the Millerites. And this was a, a farmer by the name of William Miller. And he had carefully studied his Bible, as many people do, except he decided that God had implanted a little, little, little clues. He didn't really want us to know when the world was going to end. In fact, in, in the Bible it says explicitly that no man will know the day. But if you cherry pick, if you just sort of, well, I like this piece, but not that piece, and I'm going to believe this piece, but not that piece, then of course you can make it say whatever you want. And uh, Mr. Miller, I'm sure he was a fine, devout man, uh, had concluded that in fact the world was going to end on April 23rd, 1843. And uh, he had this sect of followers, many of whom were rather pissed off when the day came and went, and they'd given away their, 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 you know, their plows and their horses, and they're like, dude. We followed you up to here, where's, what, oh, oh no, we, he was wrong. See, he, he kept putting the date back and forth, back and forth. Um, and the, actually, uh, his, his group became what's now known as the, the Seventh-day Adventists. Um, and every now and then you hear a little prediction coming out of them, but they've sort of gotten out of the prediction business. Wise move. Then we have Doomsday, 1910. Any astronomers here know, uh, know the story behind this one? All right, interesting. All right. Well, this is uh, this is um, this is a comet. This is when an astronomer on the late great planet Earth decided that um, that uh, he said, "Well, hey, you know, we're going to be going near this comet, Halley's Comet, 1910, and this is not really a problem. In fact, you know, these days we look forward to seeing Halley's Comet. However, uh, astronomers said, you know, there, there's a gas in the tail of this comet that's um, related to cyanide." And people are like, cyanide, where have I heard that before? <laughs> oh, that kills people! <laughs> Holy shit! So people are like, oh, oh my god, the whole thing, like, oh, you know, Earth is going to be going through a cloud of cyanide, and, and we're all doomed. And so uh, the, the astronomers had to sort of say, well, not quite. I mean, it, it is true that there is some cyanide-related gases. However, our, our Earth's atmosphere protects us from that, so don't worry too much about that. Then, of course, we have the doomsday of March 26, 1997. Yeah. This was the, uh, the Heaven's Gate cult. This was uh, uh, leaders Bo Peep and their 37, <coughs> excuse me, their 30, 37 followers. 
also, also known as Marshall Applewhite. And uh, this is the UFO Christian cult uh, called Heaven's Gate that listened to the paranormal talk show uh, Coast to Coast AM, also known as the Art Bell Comedy Hour. Um, and they concluded, based upon something, I think somebody blogged about this, that uh, there was a, a spacecraft following um, Hale Bop, Comet Hale Bop, that, hold, that was, uh, contained Jesus. That's where he's been all this time. He's, he's been on a spaceship following. So for all the Christians wondering why Jesus hadn't come earlier, he was busy crossing the galaxy behind Hale Bob. Uh, as we all know, this, this did not come to a happy ending, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, these cultists uh, killed themselves in a, a spectacularly unpleasant way. Then, of course, we have Doomsday, January 1st, 2000. This was the Y2K scenario, and this is when uh, the developed world, especially anybody with a computer, uh, decided that, that you know, there was a concern that uh, the, the programmers that had originally done this were going to uh, cause sorts of problems. There was going to be, uh, the, the computers would think it was 1900 instead of 2000. Uh, there would be all sorts of problems, plane crashes, uh, uh, vast blackouts, failure to open viral YouTube kitten videos, uh, nuclear holocaust. There was no shortage of possible doomsday scenarios. And then, of course, <clears throat> we have one of the latest uh, doomsday uh, proponents, a man named Harold Camping. Uh, that's him there. Uh, he's notable not only for leading uh, the most recent doomsday uh, cult, but also for being 240 years old. <laughs> that is, I, I believe that's his aut autographed copy of the Bible he's holding in his hand, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, good old Harold. Anyway. So uh, he, uh, like, like William Miller uh, in, in the 1840s, he concluded that um, he was reading his Bible, as, as they do, and decided that once again God had sprinkled different, uh, different ideas about when the world would end and this and that. So uh, he, he concluded that he did in fact know the date, May 21st, 2011, last year. That made a bunch of news. It was made national news. I first heard about it on the, on the TV, and they were interviewing his followers who were just as devout as the Millerites were back in the 1840s, and they were, some of them were giving away their possessions, and they're you know, buying this hook, line, and sinker. That day came and went, as you may or may not have noticed. Uh, and then he moved the date on to uh, October, saying he'd uh, miscalculated, he didn't carry a two, decimal problem, I don't really know. Uh, but this was October, and of course, once again, uh, that failed to, to materialize. So what we find is, uh, is that... Is, oh. Hi, I'm Ralph. They think I'm text, but I know something they don't know. You're doomed. Exactly. This is, this is, the, this is the scenario you hear over and over again. You're doomed. You always have people who claim some sort of specialized knowledge, either from God or from biblical texts, and, and the answer is always, they're, what they're doing is they're presenting to the unwashed masses, those who are not smart enough to know otherwise, like, by the way, you're doomed, we're all doomed, and I just want to let you know this. Now, in the case of Harold Camping and, and others, it, it's always baffled me, because what exactly are we supposed to do about this? I mean, really, okay, let's say the world was going to end, you know, in, in December uh, 20, 2011. Uh, what, okay, thanks, dude. Um, what, <laughs> it's not clear what the message is. Uh, you know, go rape and pillage, uh, you know, don't, don't pay your mortgage. I, I don't know, I don't know what they want us to do with this information. It's not particularly useful information. By the book. By the book, exactly. So, uh, one question comes up is where do these doomsday ideas come from? Well, there, there's, there's two basic, um, two basic areas. One of them is, uh, is, as I mentioned earlier, we have, a, we have the supernatural or eschatological <coughs> point of view. And uh, these, are, these are where the doomsdays and apocalypse days are derived from sacred texts. For example, Bible prophecy. Uh, in, uh, in Karen Stolznow's um, uh, talk yesterday, she talked about the Bible code. Another perfect example, <coughs> Michael Drosnin writing that uh, in, in, I think he's got now two or three books out in which he claims that uh, if, you, if you do uh, various letter pattern searches in the Bible and other sacred texts that there's, you, know, you, can, you can pull out uh, you know, these, these messages from God as to when, when Doomsday is. Again, it's not clear why this would be. I mean, why, if, if God wants us to know when Doomsday is, he can make this much more clear than this. I mean, you could just say, you know, page 48, by the way, guys, it's, you know, it's, it's 2012. 
you know, there's no reason to sprinkle these things all over the place. So a lot of these are, are again, the, the, the origins of these are from the supernatural text where this is where the divine message is coming from. In other cases, it's a, a natural origin. We have, or for example, the ecological origin. So we have freak disasters. We saw this in the, in the concern over Halley's Comet, that there's some external force that we can't deal with and usually is, is unav unavoidable and we're all screwed because planets are gonna align or uh, you know, in one case there was a guy that wrote a book called 5-5-2000, uh, five, five, The Coming Ice Age. And uh, I think his name was Richard Noon, if I'm not mistaken. And, and the book was uh, about you know, May 5th, 2000, in which he claimed that uh, the, uh, the, the plants were going to align in such a way that it would cause cataclysm and a coming ice age. And I first heard about him, I think, in, in 98. And uh, I, I contacted him. I was like, God, I'm interested in your book. Apparently, you said the world's going to end. How's that going to go? And uh, he said, oh, yeah, this is all, it's all science, all science. <laughs> Okay, it's all science. So anyway, uh, you can now find his book, 552000, on Amazon.com for one cent. <laughs> Get your copies now. They're, they're, they're rare or something. And I actually asked him for an interview uh, on May 6, 2000, uh, just in case, in case it doesn't all go as he expected. I was wondering, do you mind if I just schedule something in? I know you may be busy, you may be dead, but you know, can we work something? He's like, I don't, I don't think so. Like, all right, whatever. So we have the, the sort of freak disasters. And the other one, the, the other version that we have are the man-made disasters. Uh, anybody here remember the, the 1982 film Koyan Eskatsi? Yeah. Okay, well you've got you know, life out of balance. I think it's a, a Hopi and Navajo word. And essentially the idea is that humans are destroying our planet and we're, we're, all, we're all doomed and uh, it's, it's coming sooner or later. Now, that's not to say that there's not a green of truth to it. Certainly we are polluting the planet and there's ecological problems. That's different than saying we're all doomed. <laughs> you know, it certainly is coming soon. So, so these, are the, these are some of the different scenarios that you have with the doomsday folks. So then that brings us to mine prophecy in 2012. So the concern began uh, about, let's say about five or six years ago when books and movies started popping up uh, with tie-ins to the, the Mayan civilization and end time prophecy. I've got a handful of books right here. Um, 101 things you should know about 2012. Uh, there's actually not 101 from, from what I, my count. Um, Apocalypse 2012, an investigation into civilization's end. The hard scientific evidence behind calamities portrayed in the movie 2012. <laughs> yes, the hard science. And it, I, I noticed we've got, um, one of the blurbs is by Tim LaHaye. If I'm not mistaken, isn't Tim LaHaye the, the, uh, the left behind guy? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, that's not a blurb I would use on my book. Um, and then we have also, and I'll, I'll talk about these other, other authors, but we've also got uh, 2012, The Return of Quetzalcoatl. Uh, this is by Daniel Pinchbeck. I'll talk, I'll talk about him later. It's got a fractal thing on there. And I, I looked up, just, just for fun, uh, I looked up uh, in, the, um, in the index quantum physics, because he's not a quantum physicist, I should add. And it's, it's great. It's like one of them is quantum physics, comma, Shamanic understanding of reality and. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically anybody with an opinion uh, and access to a keyboard, although not necessarily spell check, um, is, is happy to cash in on this. Blogs, books, magazines, you name it. So again, we have sort of different, different varieties of the New Age folks. Some of them are uh, 2012 New Agers, sort of gloom and doom. Uh, they, they say that the world either will end or may end uh, in some unpleasant way, uh, you know, disembowelings, uh, uh, Polly Shore movies, fire, <laughs> cataclysm, just whatever horrific death you can imagine is, is maybe in store for us. And then you have, on the other hand, you have people who are more along the, the Daniel Pinchbeck side who are more sort of, hey, you know, it's all right. It's all, it's all good. It'll, everything will work out. This is more of a... You know, instead of disaster, it'll be, we just need to love each other, drop some acid, uh, plant a tree, everything will be fine. Um, and, uh, and so that's it. They, they don't see 2012 as being the end of civilization, but a new enlightenment. Very much like some of you may remember the uh, harmonic convergence that happened in 87, in which all the, uh, all the countries of the world, people of the world, would come together and there would be no more war. Remember that? That happened. 
in, in 87, in case you forgot. Anyway, it'll be something very, very similar to that. So the question comes up, why the Mayans? Right? I mean, there's, there's dozens of calendar systems. There's Arabic calendar systems. There's Jewish calendar systems. There's Gregorian. You know, it's only 2012 in our particular calendar system. So what, what is, why is anybody paying attention to the Mayan calendar system specifically? And the answer is um, because they, it fits in with their sort of condescending, noble, savage idea of the Mayans. These, the New Agers have this idea that, well, they, these ancient people, they had this wisdom. They built these pyramids and these calendar systems, which is impressive. They, they did, actually did have an impressive calendar system. That doesn't mean that they outsmarted the rest of us. It just means they could do a good calendar system. And for these people, the, the idea that Mayan mystics somehow predicted the end of the world millennia ago that, that modern scientists don't know about and are, are oblivious to, uh, this holds a certain populist appeal to them. They, they like, oh, we're sticking it to the man because the Mayans knew this. And, you know, it, this is in some way similar to the, um, the, 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 what you find with the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the Egyptian stories, uh, by, you know, the, the idea that the ancient uh, Egyptians weren't smart enough to have uh, created the pyramids on their own. They must have had uh, guidance from extraterrestrial, the sort of idea that, well, these, these, these people had these, this amazing technology and that, you know, where did this come from? And there's all these different systems. So the other option, so we have the New Agers, and then on the other hand, we also have the scientists and pseudoscientists. So while most of the concern and panic is confined to New Agers, there are a few scientists and pseudoscientists <laughs> who are somewhat concerned about real changes, actual changes that will go on. Uh, one of them I mentioned earlier is uh, Lawrence E. Joseph, who wrote the rather dramatically titled Apocalypse 2012. And he, uh, he says, well, he said, he's not saying the world's necessarily going to end. What he's saying that is that there will, he, he's pointing to, for example, increased sunspot activity. And it is true. We have had increased sunspot activity this year, and we will continue to have some uh, next year. So, that much of it is true. Uh, he's also talking about some um, shifts in, in the in magnetic fields and you know other things like that. So basically, he's looking to signs in the real world, actual legitimate physical changes and geological changes, and saying yes, and this could happen. This could happen. And of course, the answer is well, could it happen? Sure, anything could happen. Uh, but the, are, are, you know, is sunspot activity actually enough to to cause us? Uh, major, you know, cataclysm, the answer seems to be no. So what does all this have to do with the mines? Fair question. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to go through this very quickly. I I've read up on the Mayan calendar. I do not uh, pretend to be an expert on it because I haven't spent 15 years researching. But in essence, <clears throat> the Mayan calendar, also called the long count, is divided into different units, including the Keen, one day, Winal, 20 days, Tun, 360 days, the Katun, 7,200 days, the Boktun, which is 14,400 days, and 13 Boktuns, which is 1,872,000 days. Adding notation from another Mayan calendar system, because that wasn't complex enough, and you blend that with another calendar system called the 260-day uh, Tolskin cycle with another calendar system called the 365-day Hob cycle, what you find is that uh, the first day of their current calendar system, uh, which was 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, ahu 8 kumku, and the final day is written as 13 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 4 ahu 3 kankin. And therefore, the calendar began on August 11th, uh, 3114 BC, with 0, 0, 0, and it will end on December 21st, 2012, which would be 13 uh, baktuns at the, at the end of the 13th long count. You got that? Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that everyone's on the same page here, because there will be a test later. So uh, it is true that the, the, uh, the 13th Bakhtum in the Mayan calendar ends um, this, this December. Absolutely true. It's also true that uh, the end of the Gregorian calendar on my wall ends on December 31st. <laughs> make of that what you will. Um, there is precisely one Mayan inscription among all the thousands that exist that, that mentions the date 2012. This is not something that the Mayans were particularly concerned about. This wasn't, there weren't like red flags everywhere and people, you know, uh, you know getting, getting terrified over it. 
It's, uh, it's on a rock called Stella VI, which is found in, in uh, Tortuguero, uh, the ruins uh, in the uh, state of um, Mexico, Tabasco, actually where they make Tabasco sauce, or it was origin. And it describes the descent of a Meyer Mayan god named Bolon Gokuku. And it says it will happen when, quote, the 13th Bakhtun will be finished, which, again, is soon. Uh, I had a couple handouts. I, there's like 20 or 30 of them flying around. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure how big a crowd to expect, so 20 or 30 was obviously badly misjudged. <laughs> um, anyway, th there's a couple of flyers that actually have an inscription on there, so if you're lucky enough to have one, you can sell it on eBay later on. Um, and this is it. <clears throat> this is... Uh, this is the, this is Stella Six. This is this is what the this is what the concern is about. <laughs> and if you look in the bottom left hand side there, there's three different uh, little uh, little glyphs there, and these are the ones that are that are depicting the the rise of, of this god Bolon. Uh, now again, to the Mayans, this was not anything necessarily unusual. They had lots and lots of gods, and this was only one of many gods, and this just happened to be the end of, of his particular cycle. You know, the Mayan calendar is heavy on, on renewal and new calendars. So let's look at the, the, uh, the ancient Mayan ideas of what was going on here. The ancient Mayans viewed this as an end of the cycle, despite uh, the claims of the contrary in dozens and dozens of, and hundreds of books such as these. Um, the Maya didn't actually hold that much significance for 2012, and they certainly did think the world was going to end. We know this because, uh, because uh, in addition to the date of 2012 when, when Bolon, the, the god Bolon would, uh, would, would ascend, they mentioned a bunch of other dates that happened after 2012. So clearly, if, if they didn't think anything was going to happen after 2012, they wouldn't have mentioned, oh, and look forward to this date in 2015, and you know, 3018, things like that. Uh, so so uh, th this is something you have to keep in mind here. So uh, in some cases, uh, centuries and, and millennia later on. So this, is, this was not something that people were thinking was going to be the end of all things. So this is what the ancient Mayans think. So what do the modern Mayans think? Basically, their position is who gives a shit. <laughs> um, they're, you know, the, the Mayans who live in the Yucatan, and I've, I've actually been there. I've been to the Yucatan and some of the, some of the ruins in, 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 uh, in, in Tikal, in Mexico, and Belize. They're more baffled and annoyed uh, than anything about this whole 2012 thing. They're, they're like, I'm sorry, what? Um, in fact, I, I was reading a, 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 an article and there was a, um, an anthropologist by the name of, uh, of uh, Joe Awe and he, he asked some of, the, some of the Maya who still live there, said, well, what's your, what's, your, what's your take on all this? And their answer was, what does this have to do with the price of milk? I got, I got kids to feed, you know, I got, I have cattle dying, I've got someone raiding my lawn, uh, you know, I can't download kitten videos, uh, I'm upset here. So basically their, their point is, uh, this is, the, in many ways this is very much a manufactured, uh, manufactured story for, by new agers and others who are just sort of trying to make, some, make something fun out of it. So let me go and, uh, I'm, just do a little, I'm gonna show a little video clip and if there's time then I'll do a little, a little Q&A. Uh, I went to the, uh, the, um, the premiere of 2012. I was invited to uh, Yellowstone to, uh, for the, anybody see the movie 2012 with John Cusack? Okay, a handful. You didn't miss much if you, if you missed it, but, um, so I went up there, interviewed John Cusack, who was kind of a dick. Um, <laughs> I, he, was, he was a nice guy, just, it, anyway, um, I'll tell you later. Anyway, so while I was there, I got a chance to interview uh, three uh, so-called 2012 experts. And uh, one of them is uh, Daniel Pinchbeck, as I mentioned earlier, uh, who's the author of 2012 Quetzalcoatl. Another one is John Major Jenkins, who actually is a Mayan scholar. Uh, he's the first person in this clip. He's got a beard, and he wrote a really pretty good book on, on the history of the Mayan. And the third one is this other author here, um, Lawrence Joseph, who has a slightly, I say slightly more scientific uh, uh, perspective on this. My favorite part, look, look, for, the, look for the captions. Look how they're, look how they're introduced. Anyway, just a little short clip, I'll show you what they say. It's the apocalypse, end of days, the judgment day, the end of the world, my friend. Christians call it the rapture, but the, the Mayans knew about it, the Hopis, the, uh, the I Ching, the Bible, kind of. As you know, you know, the Mayans and the Mayan calendar is only one of many different civilizations and one of many different calendars. Is, why do you see anything particularly significant or valid in that, in that calendar system? 
Well, for me, it's, it's very clear that uh, 2012 is anchored to this empirical Apocalypse theorist. alignment. That's why the Maya chose December 21st of 2012 to end this vast cycle of time. So unlike other vague prophecies or prognostications, uh, this cosmology is a very sophisticated and involves astronomical science. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I would say that, you know, I'm very interested in shamanism and shamanic practices and think there's Here's more validity back. there than, than our modern Consciousness explorer. society has allowed us to consider. And the, and the Maya civilization was the most kind of advanced and sophisticated form that, that a shamanic culture has taken on the planet. And as part of that, that, that you know, knowledge that they pulled together was this, this understanding of, of time cycles that I think is just, you know, whether it's better or not, it's certainly fascinating that uh, they went so deep into it and really created a kind of uh, fractal and harmonic cyclical model of time that is, that is different than our linear calendar, the Newtonian time that we're still kind of living in and, and seems to be almost closer to kind of a quantum physics perspective. Quantum physics, there you go. Ding, 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 ding. Today's was pure genius. It came as close to determining uh, eclipses and movements around the heavens as very close to what we now know today with our satellites and computers and telescopes. Ancient genius that's been overlooked until now, largely, simply deserves our attention, our respect, and our further research. Okay. Well, given, given that history is littered with failed prophecies, failed promises of new age, enlightenment, whatever else, is there any reason to assume that 2012 will be any different? Well, for me, I, I, I'm not that concerned with whether the Maya prophecy, whatever that is, fails or succeeds. What I've been concerned with is reconstructing this lost ancient paradigm that is very profound in its scale and scope. It integrates not only the astronomy of this rare alignment, but also the ancient Maya's uh, spiritual beliefs about cycle endings. And so there's this sort of grand holistic vision that the Maya had and uh, that we can now... Um, Put that on the table and talk about it, I think, is uh, something very important to do right now because it elevates our estimation of the ancient Maya genius. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, stepping aside from what the Maya might have known prophetically or through their visionary work, you know, th this is critically a, a crux, a critical crux of a transition. For, I just, for I get, every time I watch this, I crack up, he's just saying nothing. At, you know, massive species extinction, accelerating climate change, uh, resources disappearing. So, so you know, we're, we're probably not going to be able to continue on this planet very comfortably unless we kind of come to our, our senses and realize that, that this kind of the inertia of these, of these industrial systems that we've created are, are actually on the, on the point of destroying us. He's literally not making sense. Seriously. 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 I've listened to this. He's literally not making sense. By the end of the century, there's going to be 150 million people left on the earth if we continue with what we're doing. You know, so we clearly have to look outside the box for solutions, and I think there are many solutions, but there hasn't been the social and political will to kind of uh, deploy them systemically. So I think recognizing the situation we're in, we then have to find that, that will and make that happen. It's like he's stringing together these buzzwords that just, quantum, cycles. But it is the coincidence between that ancient prophecy and the solar climax of 2012 that makes, makes me insist that we look closer and even if it doesn't turn out to be 2012, there, there are things happening with the sun in relationship to the earth that we have to know now, we have to learn more about and, and act. So there you go. Um, again, it's, I, I've listened, I met Pinchbeck, he's a nice guy. The man has dropped a lot of drugs. Uh, and again, his solution is to just to drop a bunch of drugs and everything will be fine. Uh, it's just fast. If you read his book, it's just, it's just this hodgepodge of new age stuff and cycles and, and, and crop circles and. The kitchen sink is in there at some point. So here's my prediction. Uh, here's my prediction for, my, for 2012. I believe, and I say this with all sincerity, I predict there will likely be widespread stress and panic across North America, here in North America and elsewhere, other Christian nations, Christian nations, on the day that the 13th Bactum ends. After all, it is four days before Christmas. <laughs> Make of that what you will. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we have like, I don't know, a minute or 40 seconds or something. I'll take a quick question or should I wrap it up? We're good. All right. Thank you all for, uh, for listening to my babble. Ben Radford, folks. Ben Radford. Give him that early morning cheer.